The first lab explores the use of the drawing tools and lets you start working with layers. In the timeline, you can have multiple layers and you want to use them wisely. For your first lab, I want you to draw a very simple object. I'm going to pick a flower, but you could pick a chair or a bicycle, something simple. You don't actually have to finish it, but I want you to spend about 90 minutes using the drawing tools that we worked on in class in Flash. If you missed class, you need to go through the first two chapters of the lynda.com Flash Essential Training to go over the drawing tools. Because I know many people are not actually excellent artists, I'm going to allow you to get an image from the web and use it, and you can trace it as a background to learn to use the tools. So I'm going to st first start by bringing in my external file. To do that, I select the o import, import to stage option. It'll take a moment, and then it'll allow me to browse for my image. I downloaded my image to my flash work folder, DGM 100 work, and it's simply flower. Now it's way too big. This is way bigger than I want to work with. So I'm going to use the free transform tool while holding down the shift key to resize the image. Even after doing that, I may not exactly match the stage, and I don't. I want to exactly match the stage. So I'm going to select the stage, and then I'm going to select the Properties tab. In the Properties tab, I can select the stage size, select Edit, and have the size match the contents of my stage, so they'll match the picture exactly. Background color doesn't really matter here, so I'm going to leave it as white. I'm going to hit OK. Now my picture exactly matches the stage. I'm hitting control Z till I go back to the right spot. Yeah. If you need to align it, you can use control K or command K on a Mac and you can align an image to the stage both horizontally and vertically. And there we go. I'm aligned and ready to go. With Flash, it's easy to select a layer that you don't intend to. I'm going to name the layer Original and I'm going to lock it because I do not want to accidentally change my original image. I actually would like to make this a little bit faded out so I'm going to convert it to an object by hitting F8 or selecting Modify Convert to Symbol. By making it a symbol, I'm going to make it a graphic. And all graphics should start with GR to make them align in the library. By making the symbol a graphic, I can then change the color effects. And I can use my alpha because I want it there, but I don't want it there really strongly. I want it in the background. Okay, now I'm happy with it. I'm going to lock it and it gives me something to work with. I can use multiple tools. And the goal of this exercise is not to make the most perfect reproduction of the picture. In fact, I'm not going to finish the whole picture. I'm just going to try and do the sunflower itself right here. I'm not going to worry about the background. I just want to use as many tools as possible. My tool of choice when starting this is going to be my pen tool. And I'm going to use no fill color and a black line. And this is, and as you notice, it prevents me from accidentally selecting the same layer, which I frequently do. So I always lock what I'm not using. So I'm going to name my second layer Petals. Remember that whatever is on top appears in the front. And I'm going to go back and try to trace using my pen tool my 
petals. And I won't do the whole flower during this lecture because it would take me a couple hours to get it to the level that I'm happy with. But I've now created the pen, I've now created an outline that I can fill using my fill tool. And from this I'm going to pick a color. Let me use this one. I'm going to pick a color that is near the color of the flower. I'm going to use my bucket tool and I'm going to fill the petal. Now typically what I would do is I would then delete the lines because I really don't want a sharp edge showing here. Another tool that I might use would be the paintbrush tool where I would pick a darker shade of gold or orange Use my paintbrush tool and then I can change the transparency of that. It's going to appear off screen, but I'm changing the alpha slider in the color window. So I have set the alpha to 40%. Now with my paintbrush tool I can paint some lines on top of the previous shading. If I'm not completely happy with it, I can always go back change the color, make the alpha stronger, and use my bucket tool to change the density of the lines. There, I'm much happier with that.